Welcome back to the North Farren Woods. We just got done chatting with Princess Zelda, who told us to come here in search of the Master Sword, which will allow Link to return to his Hylian form. Our destination is a little mysterious at this time, so just run forward and go as if you're going to enter the Forest Temple. Once you get about halfway through this area, a little scene takes place of the girl monkey from earlier, who is being chased by this new enemy here called Puppets. They surround her, then they will glance after you and change their minds to come after you instead. Don't worry, a single hit with any of your attacks will defeat them with the whole link, so just like a spin attacks or a jump attack will, you know, just Z-target them and press A to dash into them, and it'll kill them in one hit. The monkey will then speak to us, because she's an animal, and we can now speak with wildlife while we are in wolf form, so she thanks us for rescuing her, and mentions that there's a really pretty wooded area on the other side of the cliff. Since we are looking for the mysterious grove, it's awfully convenient, and it's probably one of the same. She explains that she climbed over there and tried to get deeper into the woods, but she was attacked by those puppets. After she's done speaking with you, you can actually talk to her again, I suppose in case you forgot what she said, and she'll paraphrase what she said earlier, and also says that you smell familiar, like the green prince who helped her out before, so I guess she recognizes us. With that out of the way, you want to run forward and get on top of the large stump off to the right. From here you can use Minda to perform a bunch of Minda jumps to get through this large cavernous area, uh, with all the wooden trees and everything. So, once you get to this far platform, you'll have to two keys. You want to defeat them real quick before they can smack you. They should be pretty easy for you to defeat. You want to run forward, and there are two ridges straight in a row. Wait for the wind to blow them in your direction, and then get off to the far side, and then just wait here patiently for the wind to blow again. So we'll turn the bridge once more, and allow you to gain access to the platform off on our right. From here, you want to just tightrope across here, and why are there these logs? Like, seriously. They're like freaking trees that are attached to more tree vine things that are swinging back and forth. Does like Mother Nature seriously hate us that much? I don't know. It's just so like unrealistic. <laughs> it just bugs me. Anyways, so up ahead there is actually another Howling Stone. Once you finally get across here, you want to listen to the song first. You press the B button to listen to the song. Then you want to press and hold the A button while using the analog stick to howl the song back to it. The timing for this one is a little odd compared to the easier ones we've done thus far, uh, but once again, you should be able to do it pretty easily. Once you finally make it successfully, you will be taken to this misty world once again with the Golden Wolf, where you can howl the song together. For those of you who have played Ocarina of Time, this song may sound a bit familiar because it is the Prelude of Light, which allowed you to teleport to the Temple of Time within that game. Anyway, this will lead us to getting the next hidden skill, the Helm Splitter, which we will grab shortly after getting the Master Sword. If you have yet to get the other two hidden skills that we've gotten thus far, the Shield Attack and the Backslice, you will be eligible to get those once we have acquired the Master Sword as well. Now, if you have been following the walkthrough thus far, you should already have those two hidden skills, but if you don't have them yet, or you are just now beginning to follow along with this walkthrough so you don't have them yet, you can check out our Howling Stone Guide on our website at ZeltaDungeon.net, which will show you all the Howling Stone locations, as well as the locations of each place the Golden Wolf will appear, so you can get all those hidden skills you have missed thus far. So w once you have are done howling to this particular Golden Wolf, we will appear back in Farron Woods, and he will show our map real quick, and it will show his current location, so we will actually go find him later in this chapter to get that next hidden skill, the Helm Splitter. So he is between Hyrule Castle and South Hyrule Field, so it's like Central Hyrule Field. We will return there later to get that, once we are back in our Hylian form. So with that, you want to enter the cave-like entrance to enter a new, deeper part of the woods that the monkey told us about. As soon as you enter, you'll see a short scene showing off the area, and titles it as the Sacred Grove. This is where Zelda told us to go, so we're in the right place. You want to run forward and check out yet another Howling Stone here on the left. This one is a little different because it has a Triforce symbol on it, and it does not bring us to a Golden Wolf, like all the other Howling Stones thus far. You may recognize the song, which is from in several other Zelda titles. It's Zelda's Lullaby, which is the song of the royal family used in Ocarina of Time, but is also the theme of the princess whenever you talk to her in basically all of the Zelda titles that have her in it. So you may even recognize it from this very game as well. That being said, this particular stone will summon a new odd character called the Skull Kid, uh, who will lead us to the heart of the Sacred Grove. However, the catch is that he plays a little game of hide-and-seek with us, taunting us to follow him, and opening up new areas as he runs away from us each time. So we'll find him, we'll smack him, and then he'll run away, and then we have to go chase after him all over again. So every once in a while, he will blow his, like, flute pipes or whatever, summoning four more of those puppets, which will attack you, making this really annoying really quick. Because of the way he attacks uh, everybody, I guess he attacked the monkey as well, so I guess that means he like attacks everybody who enters the Sacred Grove. So it's not like he's giving us any special treatment. Due to the way he giggles, I assume he enjoys it. But don't worry, you will learn to hate this giggle before too long. 
So with that, you want to go ahead and run into the next area, and I'm going to be just using A repeatedly to dash and to get through this area really quickly. Uh, I won't be giving too many directions, but I did make a map that you can see on the left. You want to continue following this path, and once you get into an area where the Skull Kid is at, you can actually listen for him, because he's playing the same song for the Sacred Grove on his pipes or whatnot. So you can actually listen for him, and once the music gets louder, you know you, he is nearby, or if you hear him giggling in the distance and such. So just listen for him, and you can just hunt him down. So that is his first location, that one's really easy, you want to continue following the very obvious path. It's pretty, um, you know, it goes in one direction, so it's not really that hard, you can't really get very lost this time around. Uh, so you want to continue on, once you make it back to this watery path, you want to go through the, um, the path with these two waterfalls, and then immediately take the first right you come to, just follow the right wall. And in this area you have to follow him, uh, he's up on top of this platform, you want to jump into the water, and climb up all these little ledges. As you can see, I made this little map that is off to the left, and it's pretty fancy. Uh, it's a little bit blurry because of the way I rendered this video, um, but it is, you know, it's not really the most accurate thing in the world, but it is really good for what it is. So, uh, this is the location of the second, you know, area where the Skull Kid is hiding out. He'll run off once again, so you want to go ahead and jump in the water. We're going to go chase after him once more. So once again, now the path is now all, all rearranged. You have to actually return. So you'll see this is the area where we came in from, but now it's closed. We want to return to this room. Now it's connected. And we want to head this way. So but once again, kill any of the puppets that get in the way. And go on through this next passage. So once again, now the path with the two waterfalls that way is now closed. We're going to head through this area on the left now, which is now open. Take it all the way up here, and you'll see up ahead that you can look up You'll see the Skull Kid is actually hanging out up there, dancing and giggling and such. Occasionally you can actually watch him and you'll see him blow his pipes once again. But you want to climb up these little stumps, I guess, and then use them to get up onto this other platform. So here I'm just totally ditching the puppets. So once you get all the way up here, you're on this upper ledge. We'll actually return to the previous room where we saw him, but now we're up on that on those wooden platforms where we can chase him down and smack him. So he will disappear one last time and he'll go into this new area, so he opens up this final area where we are going to go chase him down. So with that you want to go ahead and hop down and chase after him. So lead into this new area and go off to the left, and we are going to have a little open world mini boss battle. So you'll see Skull Kid is down below and he's on top of this little pillar in the center of, the, of this uh, little battlegrounds area. So you want to hop on down, this will initiate this little cutscene in which he like stares us down and then he starts like pulling his pipes towards his mouth as if he's going to blow him and instead he starts stomping around. I don't know if he's like throwing a tantrum, like he's angry, but he's always grinning so it's hard to tell. He will then teleport to one of the platforms and he will blow his pipes to summon four puppets. Now the goal is obviously to smack Skull Kid himself, but we're going to have to deal with the puppets first, as you'll see. If you try to attack Skull Kid, he will just teleport out of the way once again, so you want to kill the puppets and taunt him into summoning more. While he's summoning them, he's vulnerable, he will not teleport away when you're smacking into him. So you make him teleport, or summon them on purpose, and then smack into them. So that first time he had four puppets, now he summons five puppets. So he will keep summoning more and more uh, to make it harder. So you want to continue, you want to defeat more puppets. Uh, in this example, I only killed three of them, and I left the other two. So I'm just going to Z-target him and hope that the puppets don't smack him. So there I smacked him again, and this final time he summons seven puppets, I believe. So now we have a whole bunch of them to deal with, and once again, it's just the same process over again. You want to continue killing the puppets, and uh, then smack Skull Kid when he's trying to summon more. So here I'm actually, I'm trying to get close to him and Z-target him instead, but I keep like getting caught up by the puppets, I keep Z-targeting them instead. <laughs> I still managed to smack him in the last second. So now he will like, I guess he looks like he's scared or something, and then he will just disappear. However, he still like giggles and he says bye, so. This is not the last time we will see this character, I can already hear you groaning from here. So this will open up the final passage into the heart of the Sacred Grove. So that's all the time I have for this video, join me for the next one and I will show you how to get the Master Sword.